Hello and welcome to Conversations with the Holy Spirit. My name is Tim Jeffrey Johnson and we are currently live on um, all of our social media platforms. Um, I just wanted to make sure that um, you all can hear um, me. Um, in one second, just so we know just so we know uh, if you're if you're listening to me and you can hear me just give me a thumbs up um, before we proceed uh, just give me a thumbs up uh, before we proceed um, just give me a thumbs up um, I can see all of your comments I can see all where you're watching from just let me know where you're watching from if you're watching from Houston if you're watching from if you're watching from my wife said no okay i'm gonna bump up my volume a little bit let me know if you can hear me thank you for letting me know darling i love you um i love you a lot i i mean i came up here for a quick message um yeah, my wife says she's watching from home with mills let me do something real quick and put up a chat overlay um there we go so i want to see where you're watching from the volume is better she says great fantastic uh, thank you for letting me know that's why i need you that's why i keep you around you know uh, so that everybody can have a, a wonderful experience we just invite you holy spirit precious holy spirit into this place um there's a reason why we have all this quietness around us and lord god we know that we will receive a fresh fire from you in the name of jesus we have prayed amen um just go ahead hit the like button share subscribe anything you want to do because there's a message that is coming out to all of god's people even in this season and i don't want you to uh, be exempt from all of these things i want you to participate in what god is doing i was sitting in my office the other day um, I mean, I said the other day, today actually, and I heard the Spirit of the Lord say these words to me. He said, it is a season. We are in a season of hiring. God is in the season of hiring. Um, we need to be ready because a wave of anointing is coming and it's here. A wave of anointing is coming and it's here so if you're prepared you will understand the waters and how to navigate the waters you have to stay in the place and presence of God through prayers live a life of holiness so you can see God and know and understand his will concerning your life we have to stay in God's will to understand his purpose concerning our life. We cannot neglect our children, our family members in this journey. We have to pull everyone along with us because you know what's interesting people? No one should be left behind. Otherwise, we'll have more work to do. We'll have more work to do in the sense that we have to gather people and, you know, sometimes even those ones you, you're supposed to pull along, if you don't pull them along, they will become weights on you. So whether it's your children or your spouse, you pull them along in the journey that God is sending you for. It is a season of hiring. It is a season of hiring. God is searching through the hearts of men to see which one, which one of us will be equipped enough to do his work, will be confident enough to do his work, will be yielding enough to receive his spirit. Because trust me, another wave is coming. And the reason why I say this is because in 2015, there was a wave that came 
and it swept across the world. Not everybody knew exactly what was going on, but I can tell you with all confidence in my heart that a few select people received a special anointing from heaven. Uh, there's a scripture that I want to um, pull up real quick. Um, hopefully this shows up on the screen. Okay. Hopefully this shows up on the screen. It says property is not available. Okay. I don't know whether this is going to show on the screen. Okay. It did not show. But if you can pull up your um, Bibles to Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and scriptures say that it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions there is something that is shifting in the spirit children of God child of God there is something that is shifting in the spirit and we must be sensitive to know the move of God it is in our place to try to understand the times and seasons like the sons of Issachar we must understand the times and seasons it is a season to receive from the throne room of the father we cannot hide anymore even Peter while he was preaching, uh, when he got the Holy Ghost, I want to pull up something here. Like I said, this is a very short, short message. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. And I'm going to read from verse 14. It says, Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk. And some of you are assuming nine o'clock in the morning is too early for that. <laughs> no, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. That's what we read in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 28. And Peter quotes this in verse 17. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy, and I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved brothers and sisters children of God child of God wherever you're watching me from God is still in the business of doing miracles and we have to be sensitive in the spirit for he's releasing a fresh wave of anointing to his people who are ready to capture it and catch it. When I got this in 2015, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that is, I didn't just get the evidence of speaking in tongues. But you see, this vision of Joel was made manifest in that words that were spoken were prophecies prophetic encounters and words proceeded out of this mouth that is speaking to you today it was amazing I'd never experienced anything like this before I'd never seen anything like this before in my entire life I was shocked to my bones I had no one to guide me I had no one to show me the way or the truth or how to walk in these giftings and my wife and I were speaking today and this is our take on the recent shootings and killings of 19 people, innocent people in Texas. She saw a post and the post read that someone was saying, oh, oh, oh God, we need help in this universe. And, and 
before she even said it in my heart of hearts i said in myself but jesus is the help that has come we have the holy spirit what other help do you need and then it dawned on us and it it, it just looks like it looks like it is sad but it looks like that every point and corner of church that you turn to it is sad that you cannot find the spirit of god inside of it because if there is a spirit of god inside of it then people like that young man who unfortunately is perishing right now lives like that would have been saved don't tell me we need jesus if you have jesus give it to the world give it to the world because the world needs jesus so if you're a pastor out there and you are lamenting and and screaming at the top of your voice and saying we need jesus i want to tell you something yes we do need jesus interestingly we have jesus and if you have jesus and there is a member of your congregation who is not growing who is not seeing the light who is not seeing the truth then what are you showing them are you doing the necessary follow-up to talk to them to pray with them to teach them to guide them or we cry out oh it's not a sunday sunday affair but guess what it is a sunday sunday affair because you don't follow up you don't talk to people you don't find out what is going on in their lives you sit in your high places and you think you are humble the lord says let he who thinks he stands take heed yet lest he falls the lord is telling you today gather up your sheep put your house in order because we don't even know when jesus is going to come jesus himself doesn't know when he's going to come but we will all give account for every word that we have spoken every life that we have tried to change through the help of the holy ghost we cannot go about putting up themes oh it's is is this reunion is that and that oh my year of glory and the heart is not changed Aren't we worse than hypocrites? When we decide to do what we need to do, it's only when we decide when what the Holy Spirit has told us to do. When we do it, that's when we're going to see the manifestation of God's words. Prophecy is not supposed to be sweet all day. Prophecy, the, 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 the office of the prophet is not an office to, subs, to, 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 to be subservient. It's not an office that, that, that gives milk and honey all the time. Sometimes the strange words, mysterious words of the Lord comes. Sometimes the rebuke and chastisement of the word comes. And then we want to water down the word of God. Who are we to do that? Is it every time that we speak about all the all the beautiful things that yes God wants us to have excellent lives here on earth but there are times that his chastisement can save not only one soul because out of that one soul will come generations and you will give account of it you will give account of every word that proceeds from your mouth you will give account for every word that proceeds from your mouth So if the Lord is telling you to tell somebody, sweetie, I need you to change the way you, you speak. I need you to, to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. I will pray with you. We will fast together because this must change. It's not only when we have attacks. It's not only, look, let me tell you, even scripture say it. It says that the many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him of them all. But we must first live a righteous life. We must first live a holy life. So this fresh fire that we are all screaming for, this revival that we're screaming for, it starts from us. 
the desire to know God. Oh, oh, I will tell you, I'll tell you, I, 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 you know, they, they can decide whether they want to take the guns from people. That's not my business. They can decide they want to put stricter laws for people not to have guns. That is not my business. And that's not going to solve the situation. <laughs> oh, we are crying. Oh, uh, uh, I saw a post once that said a woman can have, can't have abortion, but yet people can have guns and kill lots of people. Oh, oh, you know, they say you're getting political here. That's not going to solve the situation. See, what's going to solve the situation is when we get up, when we do the work that we've been sent for, except you've not been sent. And you know what's strange? Scripture tells you that you have been called. Every believer out there has been called. What is your contribution on this earth? My wife and I was having the conversation and we realized that everyone who spoke of peace had their names written in the good books of communities of the world in general. People remember them. Martin Luther King, he achieved a lot with his peace. But what did the Black Panthers, what are they remembered for? Violence? Are their names written in, in, in gold? Do you even know, the, 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 do we have Malcolm X Street? No, we don't. We don't have any of that. Why? Because they lived by the sword. Father, have mercy upon your children. Father, have mercy upon your people. We cannot live like destitutes. We cannot live like people that don't know you anymore. A fresh fire is coming. We need to get prepared. Because when the anointing comes upon you, I want you to quickly find a place where you can sit with the Holy Spirit and learn from him how to use this. Because if we don't use it for the kingdom of God, it will sit with us for a long time. And it will be a waste. God forbid it be a waste in your life. Oh, we should always be looking for that one soul, that one extra soul that the kingdom of heaven will be happy about, that the kingdom of heaven will shout about in joy. But we have all these members in church and you cannot say that heaven is rejoicing. You get up on that altar and you, you, you speak words, empty words. You can yell all you like or you can speak gently and eloquently as you like but if it has no power to change anybody then you're not moving according to the Holy Ghost or people can clap for you and be excited not in the spirit but in the flesh because everything you say comes in here and goes out the other way father we don't want to be like that we want our words to carry your power in the name of Jesus let this be the prayer of every Christian, every believer out there. We can decide we want to wear what we want to wear. We are the temples of the living God. We give an example to our children. We give an example to the nations. And so when someone out there is getting violated, we're going to blame them because of what they wear? No, I blame where they came from. I blame what has been taught to them. Because they did not understand the consequences. They thought it was cool just like that. But not knowing that there are wolves out there looking for people to devour. We let our young ladies do whatever they want to do. Just walk out the house in whatever skimpy things they want to, to wear. And you're not concerned. You know, my wife and I were talking about the young man who shot those people in Texas and we felt, oh God, if his soul could have been saved, just been saved. You don't know what that young man went through. I am not standing to be his advocate. 
Perhaps he was molested by his grandmother who he shot in the face. And he felt like, I don't want all these kids to go through what I went through. And he went and he killed all of them. He could have been crazy up there and we don't know. There was no safe haven for him to come out and experience and, and speak about what he's experiencing. We should all be ashamed of ourselves. Don't tell me it's about guns in America. It's because we are not doing what we're supposed to do. We are not fulfilling the Great Commission. How many of us have spoken to the young and the growing teenagers and toddlers and infants and young adults in our church personally? Have you sat with one of them and talked to them about what is going on in their life? Do you know what they are saying behind your backs? Do you know what they are thinking of? Because guess what? In the next 20, 30, 40 years, we will be sitting at home, retired, and these ones will be running the government. If that kid was taught how to surrender to the Lord, to kneel and raise his hand before the Father, we wouldn't be speaking about this today, would we? Would we have been speaking about that today? Would we have been speaking about that today? We cannot live our lives like we don't care. We cannot. We cannot. We cannot. God is pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. And we must be ready to receive him with his truth and with his power. And when he envelops you and embraces you, it's raw. What you experience with God is raw. I can remember that day when I was just sitting or standing as I was and just worshiping God in front of everyone not caring who was looking at me. I had my head lifted up to heaven and it felt as if hot oil was being dropped from my forehead down my face. The power of God enveloped me. I didn't know what the baptism of the Holy Ghost was. I was, I was slain in the Holy Ghost. I screamed and shouted. It was nothing like I've ever experienced in my life. Many, 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 many souls are seated in prisons called churches. The church begins with one it is one. The body of Christ is one and must stay united. Oh, there is a hunger. In fact, someone right outside right now is saying, Topper, you are saying the exact things that I've been thinking all these years in my heart. In my heart, I've been thinking about this. I've been yearning, I've been crying to the Holy Ghost. That we need unity. Who says God's house was divided? God is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He reigns over all things. He is before all things. He is supreme. There is no one that can compare to our God. No one. A fresh fire. A fresh fire that is going to burn in our hearts and we're going to carry this fire to our families and to our neighbors and to our communities. We will no longer be kept quiet. We won't allow the, the, the few foolish people to rule over the many intelligent people who are around the world. You know your truth and you carry your truth. But don't be ashamed or afraid to speak your truth. 
in speaking these lives will be changed. It is up to us to raise a generation that we can present as a bride to the groom, our father. The marriage has been set. Oh, the wedding is set. I can see the tables. I can see the food. The feast is ready. And the groom is coming to take his bride. He's coming to take his bride. And he shall do it with a rapture. And after the rapture, he shall do it with his people. He shall take them in. And they will say, you are our God. And they say, yes, you are my people because my sheep hear my voice. And they know it. And they hear me. The sheep hear my voice. And they hear me. And they know me. Do we know the master? We are crying for a fresh fire. But we are far away in the cold wilderness. Oh, there is no place too far for the Lord to stretch forth his arm to reach. So he's calling his people even today to be aware of this coming wave. With it will come so many distractions in the world that people will not pay attention to the things that the Lord is releasing from heaven even at this moment. Too many distractions from your government from decisions people are making in power and in leadership. From even pastors I see and churches and denominations who seek to divide the fold of Christ who are not shepherds. Who understand, who understand nothing about being shepherds. The distractions in the health system. Oh, there will be rumors about oh, was it's another wave of of whatever disease. Oh, there is acid rain somewhere. Oh, there is this and that. Jesus said there will be so many of these trials and tribulations. Peter himself said it, even in his words, quoting scripture, that the moon will be turned blood red. The Lord said that the things of the skies, the sun, the moon, and the stars are there for signs. Don't you see the signs that are changing? Don't you see the signs that the Lord is coming soon with power and, and glory? Don't you see that the Lord is coming soon? And there is so much that we have to do as a people, but no, we neglect it. But we keep quiet like it's not happening around us. And we feel like we are safe. Oh, grace, grace, God's grace. The people sing grace, 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 grace. Disgrace. 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 Why do we act like we know what we are saying? We know what we are doing. We don't rely on the Holy Ghost anymore. We rely on our gifts and talents. We take them with us wherever we go, but we don't take the Holy Ghost with us, who teaches and guides and fills us up to the brim. There is no daily conversation. You cannot sit with him and you ask for a fresh fire. Oh, it's gonna come but we must be prepared to navigate the fire so many distractions that will come 
but we must remain focused focus on the goal focus on the price Focus on the price. Focus on the price. Focus on the price. Oh, this is... Father, we just bless you. We just bless you. We thank you. We just bless you. We just bless you. I promised my wife that I'll be out of here in a bit. I promised her. I feel the presence of God in this place. Hmm. Lord God, we just pray in the name of Jesus that we'll be ready, we'll be attentive, we'll be focused to receive this fresh fire that you're pouring out, oh Lord God, in this season. <laughs> not only to receive the fire oh god but to have enough resource enough oxygen to fan the flames oh lord god enough power to fan the flames beyond our homes beyond our communities in the name of jesus that we will not seek fame but we will seek to spread the word of the good news to your people it will be backed up by special evidence of the Holy Ghost in you. By power and signs and miracles and wonders. But this is child's food. It's food for children. The greatest joy is that one man repents and runs to heaven. Hmm. Hmm. Are we ready? Are we ready for this fresh fire, this fresh anointing? It will be like never before. It will be like never before. People all around the world Every, the, the, the funny thing is that everybody has the opportunity to catch this fire. But many will miss it. Hmm. Many will miss it. Many. Remain steadfast, remain holy, remain righteous, for without it, you cannot see God. You cannot see God if you're not pure in heart. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, I pull up the scripture, this is my final scripture for the day. Matthew chapter 5, Father, help us. Father, help us. Hmm. 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 I'm going to read it from verse chapter, th chapter 5, verse 3. It said, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those who ha whose hearts are pure. For they will see God. That's verse 8. Back it. You cannot see God if you're not pure in heart. If you don't strive towards 
living a righteous life with the help of the Holy Ghost, you cannot do it by yourself because it would be an exercise in futility. The flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. So we must be pure in heart. For out of the heart flows the issues of life. Let the heart be pure. Shut down every evil thoughts, evil manifestation before it comes. Knock it down with the word of God. For his word is sharper than a double-edged sword. His word is fire. He is a consuming fire. Guard your heart. Guard your minds. I said that was the last scripture, but I'm I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 4 to you right now. And I'm going to read from verse 23. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead. Fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Keep your feet from following evil. That's how we can see God, the power and his glory and the manifestation of his presence. That's the only way we can. Or should I say only way? One way we can. That is a sure, sure, sure way. A pure heart. Clean hands. Oh God, Father, help me. I'm about to read another scripture. Uh, Psalm chapter 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean's depths. Who may climb? Some versions say, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. God is backing up every word that he is saying with scripture, especially this one, that we must have a pure heart. I want us to do something even right now. I want us to lift up a voice of prayer and say, Father, visit me. Father, help me. You can type it out. As you are saying this, you need to type it out. You need to write it out. You need to shout it out. You need to say it. Father, save me. Father, save my family. Raise up a voice of prayer, even at this moment, because I am praying with you in the name of Jesus. You will not miss heaven. You will not miss this fresh fire that is coming from heaven in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, we need you. Is there anyone out there who is looking to embrace the Lord Jesus today? I want to tell you, lift up holy hands before your father this moment. You are before him and cry out to him and say, Lord, I am sorry. I have not had a pure heart. I have not had clean hands. I have sinned against you. Please have mercy on me. Please forgive me. I promise not to go back to my old ways. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Be the Lord over my life in the name of Jesus. The Lord says, I am sending an angel right to you right now. That angel is the angel of war and he's going to be fighting on your behalf even right now. That angel is going to be fighting on your behalf right now. He's pulling you from all the rough places. He's pulling you from all the dark places. For you have confessed your sin before the Lord. And you have called on his name. For the Lord says, you know, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. You are safe. You have safety in God's house. You have safety in God's 
hands. You have safety. Even in this moment, everyone who's been locked in a coven, I bring you out by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. You are coming out this moment in the name of Jesus. Anyone who is sick in their bodies, I tell you this moment, you are free. You are set free. You are healed in the name of Jesus. For God wants to do a work in you and his purpose and desire is for you to be able to do it. And so he's going to fill you up with the resources to do it in the name of Jesus. If you've been blessed by this broadcast, I want you to say, I am blessed. If you've been blessed, I want you to say, I am blessed. Let it keep coming. Let it keep coming. I am blessed. And once you have finished typing that out, I am blessed. I need you to type out, thank you, Jesus. All right. Just type, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to, I'm going to put my, I am blessed online too. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And then thank you, Jesus. Because the more we thank him, the more he does for us. Abberiga zobra de gaziena. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to put that up myself. Because I'm not going to be exempt from participating from this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence, for your words that have come to us today. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you, and we will get ready for this fight. We will step, we will ask you to purify our hearts. Give glory to the Lord. Give thanks and praise to Him at all times. For He's just saved somebody from death. He's just saved somebody from sin. He has pulled somebody. And there, there is a there's a rejoicing in heaven even at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for you. Uh, sharing your your evening with me i would love you to share this message with as many people as possible tell them to get ready for this fire that is coming not for their own use for but for the purpose of god in his kingdom for the purpose of god for his people tell people to get ready god is doing something he's doing something amazing and i, I we have to be ready we just have to be ready. We just have to be ready. Hallelujah. Come on, give a praise to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Well, it, it's been an amazing, amazing journey today. Um, I, I, I feel very good. I have completed the assignment that I was told to do today. I have said the word that I was supposed to say today. And I I feel like I'm free. Uh, I can I can do so much that I want to do um, even this evening. Please feel free to touch the life of somebody out there in prayer because many people are going through a whole lot of stuff and, you know, it's hard for them. But we commit you and your family in the hands of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Your life will shine brighter and brighter and brighter as you spend time having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. Do have a blessed evening. I love you guys. Bye-bye.